So the question on everyone's mind really recently is, can Mark Cavendish actually beat Eddie Merckx's record? Now obviously yesterday was a really, really hard stage, including two ascents of Mont Blanc 2. And to be honest, I thought that was probably the hardest stage for him to actually win, um, beat his record, because I thought he might get eliminated. It was a hard stage, it was hilly early on, but he actually ended up coming in with about six or seven minutes to spare, which might not sound very much, but it sort of is, because they could have gone probably a lot harder up the final climb if they needed to. So they were pretty chilled. So I think Cav's actually climbing all right. There are a couple of stages I'm a bit worried about. Maybe he won't get round, but we're going to go through the stages now and then we'll we'll see see how they all are. So the, the stage today is um, saint paul trois Château to Nîmes, um, which I think should be a sprint stage. Apparently it's very windy today. So maybe crosswinds. So potentially, you know, if he doesn't get the front group, but having said that, quick step, very good in crosswinds. So you'd expect Mark Cavendish to get to the front group. And if he gets to the front group, I don't think this 39 kilometer climb at 3% shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue. And he's climbing pretty well. And, you know, if he starts at the front and then his teammates just pace him, like it's such a draftable climb at 3%, they'll be going like 34, 35K an hour maybe. It's quite hard to get dropped on that. Obviously, it could be a, a, a steep pinch. Um, but I think considering it's not actually classified as a climb, I think it should be all right. And again, four and a half K at 5%. If anyone did do anything, I think Cav will get back on. So I think realistically, um, Cav should get to the finish uh, on this stage. And that's what I'm gonna go through first and then we'll go through his competition. Actually, no, I'll go through his competition now. So his competition is basically, Honor de Mar is out. Um, Ewan, out. Merlier, out. So he realistically is like Cease Bowl, Wout Van Aert, who I think is probably his strongest competition. I think Wout Van Aert is the most likely to win a stage in a sprint, um, apart from Mark Cavendish. And then, I reckon, apart from that, I don't think Philipson is going to beat him. Don't think Cease Bowl is going to beat him. Don't think Anthony Turgis is going to beat him. Buani could do, but he hasn't looked that good. Like, he's looked decent, but he's never looked like, oh, yeah, he could beat him. Well, I think Wout Van Aert, in the last sprint they did, um, on, like, what, stage 11, um, or no, stage 10, it, it looked like he was sort of there or thereabouts. And maybe if he was a slightly different sprint, maybe Cav was let out a little bit too early, let's say, on a different sprint, maybe Wout Van Aert could have come around. So I think in terms of competition, I think if Cav gets the finish and it is a sprint, I think there's a high chance it's going to win, realistically. So stage 12, I think very good chance of winning. Um, he only needs to get two, or one to draw, two to win. Uh, Neem to Carcassonne, again, I think this is, um, I think this should also be a sprint. Again, the Mistral is this wind that blows off the Mediterranean, so it could be very crosswindy. It's not, to be fair, it's not too close to the coast. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a similar issue. route. I think it finished in Montpellier when there was the stage where Chris Room and Sagan both attacked. Uh, look at the final kilometer. It looks like it could be slightly uphill. Um, but again, this this climb here, 5.5K at 4%. I mean, it's like 1.5K maybe, at, which looks hard, and the rest of it looks pretty chill. And it comes so early on, I, I don't really think it should. I think it should be fine. Um, obviously, there's a bit of elevation. It looks like it could be quite hilly, but if you look at that, it's like 100 meters of climbing. So... 100 meters of climbing in what, um, like 10k, so that's like 0.1%. So, again, I think this should be a sprint stage, um, realistically. I guess the, the main thing is if a breakaway goes, for instance, on this stage, like there's only quick step, maybe our care who would chase a lot of the other teams just won't because there's no point, they're probably going to lose. So, if a strong break went up the road, it could be hard for quick step to control. This stage, obviously, Cavs not going to win, but I don't think it'll get eliminated, it, it doesn't look too hard. Um, they're not too long the climbs. Having said that though, if it's race full on, this is one of those stages that in some regards can be harder for Cav just because it's very hilly, but it's consistent climbs and they're quite short. They are quite steep, some of them. So maybe this could be a difficult one, but all in all, I think he's probably got a decent chance. And the other thing is that it's relatively long. So if it's 184K, cause you get like, I think it's 15 to 20% normally of the stage when it's time uh, to finish in, it makes it a lot easier. When it's like a really short one, obviously you've got way less time. Again, this one, I don't think he should get around this. None of the climbs are too steep at the beginning. That's the main issue. If he gets dropped at the beginning, that's tough. But 6.5k at 3%, realistically, he'll get around here. Uh, and he'll probably get dropped on the Monte de uh, Mont Luis. Uh, I think that, yeah, like he'll get dropped somewhere up there. But 6% again, 5% here, and maybe 9% there will be tough. But again, long downhill finish. And sprinters take big risks in the final. So they can, they can descend very, very quickly. So it should be fine. This one again could be dangerous, but it's not because it's a long flat bit here where he's not going to get dropped. 
This climb will get dropped again, five and a half, six percent, very easy to um, to pace. And we've got this long valley road. So if he's got like Casper Asking with him, Drees Devonines and Ballerini, let's say, they look an all team time trial, and I think he should be fine. Um, this one again, colder Portet is a hard finish, but again, very flat to begin with. First couple climbs get dropped, and in the last one he'll just measure his effort, and he should get round. Um, and lose our end stage is, is the same. Tourmalade is obviously very hard, 17k at 7%. But again, it, it's it's quite easy before that. So it's basically just two climbs. Rides them hard enough, he'll get round. And then we get to the last sprint stage um, before the Champs Elysees, which is stage 19. Again, this looks very easy. Definitely should be a sprint. So calm. So Cavs now got, I think, three opportunities. And then obviously the Champs Elysees, there's a TT in between the stage. He will get eliminated on that. That's pretty hard. He actually did quite a good TT and beat Chris Froome in the, in the stage four TT. Uh, but yeah, so I think stage 21, again, very high chance, well, a guaranteed sprint really. So he's got five opportunities to win two stages. And maybe if one of, them, one of them could be a break, maybe. But I think he has a really, really, really strong chance of being Merckx's record in this tour. Like obviously he's got next year and stuff, but I genuinely think this year, there's a lot of sprint stages remaining. Okay, there's not too many sprinters. It could be hard to control, but quick step. Still have Tim de Klerk, who's just a monster on the front. Um, combine that with like asking if they need to or Dries Devonines for the early chasing. I think they've got a very, very, very good chance of beating the record. Um, the only one who may be able to stop um, Cav winning some sprints is Wout Benite, in my opinion. Um, but I still think in a in a flat sprint, where it's not been too hard, Cav just is quicker. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Let me know your thoughts. Will Cavendish break the record? Will he not break the record? Um, and also just don't remember to do all the liking and subscribing. I'm always really bad at saying that, but it definitely helps the YouTube algorithm. So anyway, cheers for watching. See you in the next one.